Hello, we're at topic 8.3, um, terrestrial radiation and the greenhouse effect. The aim for today is to describe the factors that allow Earth to maintain temperatures that sustain life. So we've discussed this a little bit before um, in the prior topic. What is terrestrial radiation? So if you recall, terrestrial refers to the Earth. That's why extraterrestrial will be anything from outside of Earth. So terrestrial radiation is the energy that is re-radiated from Earth's surface, which, as we recall, are in the longer infrared heat energy wavelengths that are radiated from Earth's surface. Since Earth's temperature is much cooler than the sun's, it re-radiates energy at much longer wavelengths. So if you recall, longer wavelengths have less energy and shorter wavelengths have more energy. Higher temperatures emit shorter wavelengths and that would come from the sun. So what absorbs terrestrial radiation? So Earth is giving off infrared energy and we have particular gases in our atmosphere called um, greenhouse gases, methane, carbon dioxide, and water vapor that absorb this infrared energy. They act as blankets in the atmosphere, they trap in the heat, re-radiated from Earth's surface, and absorb it and keep the Earth's surface at a, a temperature that is able to sustain life. Without greenhouse gases, our, the Earth's heat would be re-radiated back into space and the Earth would not be able to maintain the temperature that we all know. So what is the greenhouse effect? I'm sure you've talked about the greenhouse effect many times in a science class before. So we use the greenhouse as a model for how the atmosphere works. The, gr the glass of the greenhouse represents Earth's atmosphere, which allows the, um, the shorter wavelengths to pass into the greenhouse but it does not allow the longer wavelengths of infrared to pass out, to leave the greenhouse. So if you've ever been in a greenhouse where they grow plants during the winter, they, um, the greenhouse is much, much warmer than outside because it's trapping in heat within the atmosphere or within that greenhouse. So short wave visible, uh, visible waves are able to pass through. The re-rated infrared is unable to, be, uh, to pass back out, so it traps in that heat and heats up the greenhouse, which is the same as Earth is reheated. So life on Earth due to the greenhouse effect. Earth is in something known as the Goldilocks zone, which means that conditions are just right for life as we know it. So the average Earth temperature is 59 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's all across Earth's surface. If you take an average, the um, Earth's surface is about 59 degrees. Without the greenhouse effect, so without the greenhouse gases trapping in our heat and acting as blankets in the atmosphere, the average temperature would only be negative 3 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can see how the greenhouse gases are a necessary part of our atmosphere in order to keep life as we know it existing on Earth. Um, just to compare, Mars' average temperature is negative 67 degrees, while Venus's is 855 degrees. Now, you would think that, okay, it's closer to the sun, Venus. However, the closest planet to the sun is actually Mercury, and Mercury's temperature is only 333 degrees. So how is it possible that Venus, which is further from the sun, actually has a much higher temperature, almost three times higher than Mercury that's closest to the sun? And this is actually due to a runaway greenhouse effect. Venus's atmosphere is composed of almost 97% carbon dioxide, so it's trapping in an immense amount of heat that it doesn't allow to escape. You contrast that to Earth's atmosphere, which has less than 1% carbon dioxide. However, the more we increase that level of carbon dioxide, the more we allow the greenhouse effect to um, possibly get out of balance and allow the temperature to rise on Earth. So global warming is exactly that situation. If you have too many greenhouse gases, you can end up with a gradual increase in the average temperature on Earth's surface. So if you keep adding in more greenhouse gases, um, it's trapping in more and more heat, which gradually increases Earth's temperature. So we do certain things, humans on Earth are engaging in certain activities that are allowing this to add more greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. Um, carbon dioxide is probably the main one you've heard about, and some of the things that we do to increase the rate of uh, 
global warming is by burning fossil fuels, which we've only been doing for uh, you know a, a lot of in the last 150 to 200 years. So coal, oil, and natural gases are all being pumped into the atmosphere, um, pumping carbon dioxide into the atmosphere when we burn them. Also deforestation, trees naturally remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, as you recall with uh, you know, uh, photosynthesis. They take in carbon dioxide and put out oxygen. So if you keep cutting down more and more trees and removing forests, you are removing something that naturally removes that extra carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and is then not part of, the, of helping our situation. Um, methane is the last, um, the last greenhouse gas we're going to talk about, and this is released as a waste product of petroleum extraction, and it's also vented by increasing populations of humans and domesticated animals um, by way of flatulence, which is known as we call cow farts, or in general. So um, methane is also with an increasing population on Earth of different animals, including ourselves, we're increasing the level of methane, another greenhouse gas in the atmosphere. So what are the possible effects of global warming? All right, so if we increase the average temperatures, some of the concerns are by rising temperatures in Earth's oceans, we recently spoke about different natural disasters. Um, hurricanes, as you recall, feed off of warm ocean water. So the more we increase the um, ocean's temperature, they suspect that that would give rise to um, an increase in number and strength of hurricanes, which some scientists believe or we are currently experiencing with some of the hurricanes, unfortunately, like Hurricane Sandy, that have affected us much later in the year, that was the end of October, than typical for our location. Um, also, if we increase temperatures, we can uh, continue the melting of glaciers and ice caps, which of course affect the habitats of many other animals. Um, and if we melt those ice caps and glaciers, we increase sea level. Um, increasing sea level is a special concern to those of us who live here um, in a coastal area like Long Island. Um, as again we experienced with Hurricane Sandy, just a few feet of um, additional water can have a serious effect on flooding to other coastal areas. So over time, if we continue to um, allow this condition to happen and sea level uh, rises even a couple inches, over the course of a few years, uh, over time we could have serious coastal flooding and actually have to relocate people who live near the coasts. So flooding of coastal areas. And this again is what a main factor in what is referred to as climate change now. As you change as you change temperatures across Earth's surface and increase, you know, sea level and uh, increase the hurricanes and anything like that, you are causing a, a change to the overall climate across Earth's surface, which can be devastating in certain areas of the world. So radiative balance, we've been talking about insulation as well. So just as it sounds, balance, okay? Radiative balance, so we're talking about radiation, which is going to be from the sun. So radiative balance is when you have the input um, of radiation equaling the output of radiation. So dynamic equilibrium with insulation coming in and Earth's re-radiating energy out. Okay, so input is equaling output. So this, another way to put this is insulation equals terrestrial radiation. So let's think about when these, this event occurs and what different conditions or situations. Okay, so why is the maximum intensity of insulation on June 21st? But the warmest temperatures don't occur until late July or even early August. So we know that the, um, the longest day of the year um, by where we live in the Northern Hemisphere is June 21st. So if that's the case, why is that not the hottest day of the year? So think about it like this. Um, even though it might have the, the strongest sunlight that day, the Earth takes some time to heat up. So as the Earth heats up more and more, you end up with a little bit of a lag in, or you know, delay in the time it takes for the Earth to actually uh, get to its warmest temperature. So um, insulation needs to be absorbed by Earth's surface and then re-radiated as heat energy, as infrared, to warm the air. So there's a bit of a delay in heating up the, Earth, the Earth's surface to 
um, have that dynamic equilibrium radiative balance situation occur. So it takes until about the end of July or beginning of August for uh, maximum temperatures to be reached. All right, so radiative balance during the year occurs in which months? Okay, so radiative balance occurs in January and July. And what this means is that we have our hottest month in July and typically our coldest temperatures in January. Um, you have your most cooling off hits right after winter on December 21st, hits in January. And our warmest month tends to be the end of July. So why, do, um, why does the maximum insulation and maximum temperature um, not occur at the same time? They do not occur at the same time. Why not? Um, this is because it takes the Earth some time to heat up. And which one lags behind the other? Um, your temperature always lags behind the maximum insulation. Now, over the course of the day, when do you think radiative balance occurs? So we've talked about the, um, the most intense insulation occurs at noon each day, but is that the hottest time of the day? So as it turns out, again, there's a lag in the amount of time it takes for Earth to heat up over the course of the day. So while the maximum intensity of insulation is occurring at noon, it takes till about uh, 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon for us to reach the highest temperatures. So um, we end up with the hottest temperatures around 2 o'clock, and the coolest temperature is right before sunrise, when we've had the longest amount of time without the sun out. So the sun goes down, let's say, at 6 or 7 o'clock at night, and it comes back up somewhere around 6 a.m., right before sunrise, you'd have your coolest point of the day. So do maximum insulation and maximum temperature occur at the same time? Again, they do not. And again, the temperature is going to lag behind the maximum insulation. So there's a little bit of a delay between the maximum insulation over the course of the year and the course of the day and the highest temperature or the lowest temperature. Okay, so just to review, our maximum temperature at, um, during the day occurs between 2 and 3 o'clock, minimum around 6 a.m. During the year, the maximum temperature occurs in July and the minimum temperature in January. And that concludes our 8.3 notes on greenhouse effect and terrestrial radiation.